And Prince Harry has knocked some important noses out of joint on the very first day of his High Court phone back hacking battle against Mirror Group newspapers being slammed for wasting the court's time after failing to even show up for the opening of his own legal case. Now, having flown into the UK late, choosing instead to stay behind in the States to celebrate daughter Lilibet's second birthday, the disruptive Duke drew disdain from Andrew Green, KC, representing Mirror Group newspapers, who fumed, it is unsatisfactory that he was not available for the first day of this trial. It is absolutely extraordinary. Now, Harry's absence hasn't prevented some fascinating revelations on the opening day, however, with a 2003 headline from The People reporting an apparently private disagreement between Princess William and Harry over how to handle their late mother's former butler, Paul Burrell, being used by Harry's lawyer, David Sherborne, as apparent evidence of phone hacking, which the Mirror forcefully denies. So, Lady C, as both the High Court judge and the Mirror Group's own barrister, just totally slammed Harry today, this mission to destroy the British media isn't off to a good start, is it? It certainly isn't. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, (laughs) Harry couldn't have shot himself in the foot more effectively if he had been a sharp shooter. Can you imagine antagonizing Mr. Justice Fancourt, who had ordered him to to be available for for the first day's hearing, and he completely ignored it. Does he think Mr. Justice Fancourt is going to be impressed by the fact that he stayed behind for Lilibet's second birthday? Lilibet doesn't know what day of the week it is, much less whether it's her birthday or not. The birthday could have been celebrated on Saturday. His arrogance, impertinence, and delusionalism could not have been more apparent, and his disrespect for everybody and everything except himself. Well, especially seeing he was in the country. I mean, Phil Damper, I said earlier, as soon as he heard that, why didn't he just get his ass from whatever posh hotel he's staying at and get to court? Yeah, good evening, Dan. I've actually seen something on Twitter tonight suggesting that he was uh, having a few drinks in Soho House last night. I don't know if that's true. That might be just one of those rumours on Twitter, so I don't put any great support in it, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it makes you wonder whether he's kind of just sort of given up and he's just regarding this whole thing as a bit of a joke. I mean, as Lady C says, it's, uh, you know, the arrogance of it, the idea that uh, he couldn't have uh, had this party for Archie, for Lily Bett uh, a day or two earlier. He's just lost all sense of perspective, hasn't he? And when you think he spent that time in Afghanistan with with other soldiers who missed their families for months on end, the idea that he couldn't have just moved this birthday party is ridiculous. So I should be fascinated to see tomorrow if uh, Justice Fancourt, the judge, who clearly wasn't impressed today, actually says something to him and rebukes him in court. Well, I hope so. And he may have to give an extra half day of evidence on Wednesday. So it serves him right. Now, Lady C, there were new revelations today in court. The problem is, as Casey Green from the Mirror says, there remains absolutely no evidence that Harry's phone was ever hacked. However, they're going right back 30 years, suggesting that two letters sent between Princess Diana and Michael Barrymore suggest that phone hacking might have taken place. The first letter being an arrangement to meet between Diana and Barrymore. The second letter being her apologising to Barrymore for the fact that the meeting got out after they swapped phone details. But all of it, Lady C, seems highly circumstantial without any actual proof of hacking. Well, not only is there no proof of hacking, it's way out of time. Mm. And, you know, 30 years ago, if you had somebody's phone number and you phoned it up and you put in 0000 and they hadn't bothered to change their code, you could get their messages. I mean, that was well known throughout the whole of the world, not only in Fleet Street. So if it happened, it happened all over the world with all sorts of people. But it's 30 years ago. It has no relevance. You know, the fact that I kill you doesn't mean that I'm going to hang for having killed Phil. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, the crime has to be particular to the event and the person. and. They're dragging in everything but the kitchen sink. But, Phil, it's almost like for Harry, it doesn't matter 
that there's no proof here because what he wants to do is be on a platform reported all around the world in a courtroom saying the British media ruined my life. And we saw it again today in the opening arguments from the Permatan lawyer representing Harry David Sherborne, who said their relationship, his former relationship with Chelsea Davy, there she is coming up again. Don't know how Megan's going to feel about that because it really does start to feel like Chelsea Davy was the one who got away when Harry is concerned. But He's saying, look, this relationship was effectively destroyed. We couldn't trust anyone because we thought it was all down to hacking. So maybe Harry doesn't care, Phil, if he loses and if the evidence is there. He just wants his day in court. I think that's right. He just does want his day in court. Apparently, uh, Sherborne was rambling on today. He went on and on and on. And at one point, oh, wow. uh, they, at one point, they couldn't find him in the afternoon, apparently. And the judge said, where is he? Do you, can someone go and get him? And one of the reporters shouted out, do we have to? And everyone <laughs> laughed, everyone laughed, apparently, because he does like the sound of his own voice, as we saw from the uh, the Levinson inquiry. But uh, no, the entire thing seems to be based on the sort of premise that because a load of celebrities got hacked, Harry must have been hacked, but there's no evidence for it. So uh, it's going to be fascinating to see um, him kicked around by, uh, what's his name? Andrew Green, isn't it? I think representing the Mirror tomorrow. Quite yeah. how he's going to come out of it, I don't know. But um, well, it's yeah, going to be. I'm going to ask this lady, be... see, can Harry cope psychologically? Uh, with a cross-examination, because, of course, so far, Harry's only been questioned by his mates, Oprah Winfrey, Tom Bradby, Anderson Cooper. They failed in their journalistic duty to cross-examine Harry. So can he psychologically cope with this cross-examination tomorrow, well, Lady C? Remember how, how outraged Harry was when Tom Bradby dared to get near to the truth. Harry is arrogant. Harry is used to laying down the law. Harry is used to telling everybody what they should think. And if they, they, they dare to disagree with him, he does not deign to put them in their place to remind them that he is a prince and they are just rabble. Well, it's not going to work with Mr. Justice Fanport because judges take respect for the court very seriously. And let's remember the purpose of cross-examination is to grill the witness to get to the truth, yeah. not to, and their to test feelings, their credibility. No, 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 of course. But His job is to test Harry's credibility and to try and prove that, that he's a liar. Final word, Phil Dampier. I was just going to say, Dan, I hope he doesn't turn out with a hangover because he's going to have to concentrate for one and a half days. It's not going to be... The thing I don't quite understand is... Um, what about the journalists? Are they why, why are they not being called as witnesses, any of them? Uh, is, do you know the answer to that? Why none of them are actually appearing in court? Well, I, I think I, it's... I, I think... I think why, you know, various people wouldn't be called to give evidence for, for the mirror or against them. But, uh, you know, it seems strange to be going on about stories that weren't got by phone hacking. Well, yeah, and, and, and look, I think it's risky. Can I say why? Can I say why? It's irrelevant. Yes. No, the, the evidence of those journalists is irrelevant. We're speaking about events that are out of the limitations yeah, good time point. period. It's good totally point. irrelevant. Yeah, and, and also from American newspaper's point of view, it's very difficult to put journalists on the stand when we know journalists are never going to reveal their sources because you wouldn't and I wouldn't. But look, Lady Colin Campbell, Phil Dampier, let me tell you, are going to be with me tomorrow night for a special edition of the show, Harry's Evidence, The Verdict, from 9pm.